Number 10, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, wait, before anybody grabs the pitchforks, yes, I'm talking about the first game, not the second, but hear me out. Saying that the Ninja Turtles was huge when I was a kid would be an understatement. They were everywhere. I was a huge fan of the toys and the cartoon, so when I saw they had a game for the NES, I had to get my hands on it and play it somehow. But that wasn't a problem because nearly everyone's house, either friends or relatives I went to, had a copy of this game. It's weird. It's actually the best-selling third-party game on the console, with over 4 million units sold. Most seem to not like it as much as the second game, but not me. This game was one of my favorites. It wasn't a game you could just run through and button mash. It has an overworld you can walk around in, but to get to different areas, you must access sewers and buildings to get to the next area. The game had four playable characters, each with their own pros and cons that you can switch on the fly during gameplay made this game one of my favorites. Most people played to the dam and gave up because of the difficulty. But if you happen to beat that segment, the game opens up when you get to the city. Solid gameplay, catchy music, sprite and level manipulation, and that sick box art is why it's number 10 on my list. Number 9, Double Dragon 2. One of the smartest decisions Nintendo ever made was when they came out with the NES, it came packaged with two controllers, which was great for households with more than one child. A lot of the games released for the NES has two player simultaneous play, so when Double Dragon 2 was released, I knew I had to get my hands on it. I remember walking a mile down the train tracks to get to the movie store to rent it. And needless to say, I wasn't disappointed. In this side-scrolling beat-em-up, you play as Billy and Jimmy Lee, who are on a mission to avenge the death of Billy's girlfriend Marion after she is killed during an attack by the gang that call themselves the Shadow Warriors. This game takes real teamwork to beat. It's not an easy game. Every level has its own way to beat it. Sure, you can beat it on the normal setting, but you can't see the real ending unless you beat it on the hardest difficulty, which consists of beating all nine stages. I will never forget renting it on multiple occasions and finally beating it with my older brother, and that's why it's number nine on my list. Number eight, Castlevania III. Usually by the time a third sequel comes out for a franchise, it's old and played out but that's definitely not the case with Castlevania 3. You play as Trevor Belmont, who uses his trusty vampire hunter whip to put Dracula in his place. This is a tough game, but with the help of Trevor's three new playable sidekicks, makes it very enjoyable. Each has their own abilities to contribute to completing the game. Sypha is a female who is weaker when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, but has very strong magic spells. Grant who has the ability to run on walls, but also has the coolest ability of them all. He can change directions mid-jump, which was nearly impossible in the earlier games. And last, you had Alucard. Yes, you heard that right. You play as Dracula's son. Plus, he can turn into a bat who can help reach areas you can't reach normally. I didn't own this game when I was a kid, but I did pick it up when I started collecting and wow does it hold up even today. It's a solid gem for the NES, and that's why it's number 8 on my list. Number 7, Mega Man 2. Well, I'm sure you guys knew it was coming sooner or later, so here it is. This game took what Mega Man did good and made it great. I will always remember popping this in at my buddy Chad and Jeremy's house and hearing that intro music to the game. Just listen to it. It still gets me hyped to this day. This is the best-selling Mega Man game on the NES, and for good reason. Stellar controls, perfect platforming, amazing gameplay, great boss battles, awesome power-ups, 
and unforgettable music make this on top of most people's lists of best NES games. It's not on mine, but it is definitely a masterpiece that holds the number 7 spot on my list. Number 6, Journey to Silius. You play as a guy named Jay McCrae, who in this side-scrolling action game goes on a futuristic mission in your space colony against an evil group of terrorists that is responsible for killing your father. You discover a floppy disk that has all of your father's work on it. While viewing it, you get a personal message asking if something happens to him that you must complete the projects so the terrorists cannot destroy the colony. The plot sounds kind of familiar, huh? Maybe with a little difference here and there? That's because this game was supposed to be a movie-based Terminator game, but Sunsoft lost the license in the middle of development. So instead of scrapping the entire project, instead they gave us Journey to Silius. I didn't play this game until I ran across it at a garage sale in the early 2000s, and I'm glad I did. With five challenging levels, superb controls, fluid animations, great music, and an arsenal of swappable weapons make this one of my favorite NES games of all time, and number six on my list. Number five, Super Mario Bros. 3. Imagine a time before Google, where information wasn't just a search away, when your only source of info on upcoming games were magazines and commercials, and in this case, a movie. What Nintendo was able to do with marketing this game is simply unprecedented. 1990 was an insane year for Nintendo. They released an hour and a half NES commercial disguised as a movie called The Wizard in the late part of 1989 that rolled over into the hype for the game. When the movie came out in theaters, that was the first look we all got of the game in the United States. Just think about that. It's mind blowing. When the game finally did come out, in February of 1990, it sold insanely well. Over 17 million copies to be exact. And from the footage you can see why. This game had it all. Secrets, warp zones, new enemies, old enemies, new abilities like flying with the raccoon tail or using the frog suit in and out of water, amazing graphics, and colorful sprites. This game consists of eight kingdoms, all with a different world theme. Each world is being ruled by one of the Bowser's Kooplings. Each kingdom has a special wand that you must retrieve and use to turn the original king back to human. World 4 was always my favorite world. It's known as Big World, since all the levels and enemies are all gigantic in size. Imagine seeing this as a kid. My mind was blown. So much content was stuffed in this cartridge and at a $60 price tag was way more than worth it. In many people's minds, it's one of the 10 best video games ever made. And that's why it's number 5 on my list. Number 4, Contra. What would a top NES game list be without the greatest run and gun bullet hell shooter of all time on it? One of my most played video games while spending the nights at my cousin's or uncle's was Contra. Great co-op gameplay make this a must. This game was and still is a blast to play. It has a simple concept, kill anything that moves. You play as Bill and Lance, who fight their way through eight stages trying to survive an alien invasion and kill the leader before they take over the world. You come across many different power-ups for your gun throughout the game, like the machine gun, the laser, and the most iconic weapon in any running gun game, the spread shot. You can also shoot down item containers that might have a bomb in them that destroys all the enemies on screen at once. This game stands the test of time. Also, this is where most people started using and learning the Konami code, which you needed to put it in to give you 30 lives because of how relentless this game is. But then again, it's just as fun as it is now as it was back in the day. It's literally my go-to when friends come over to play now. Everyone knows and everyone loves it, and that's why it's so high at number four on my list. Number three, Star Tropics. I'm sure some of you didn't expect this, but Star Tropics is definitely a very common but extremely fun top-down perspective dungeon explorer. You play as a kid named Mike Jones, who's going to visit his uncle Dr. Stephen Jones on the secluded sea island, way out in the ocean. When you arrive, you realize your uncle has gone missing. So when you go talk to the chief, he tells you he's been kidnapped and gives you a special yo-yo that you defend yourself with on your journey. Later on, you will find a letter in a bottle written by your uncle saying he was abducted by aliens. 
You have a submarine that you can ride in and explore other islands looking for other clues to help you find your uncle. This game brings back so many memories. Plus I remember renting it back in the day and just thinking how much fun I had with it. The game is great and definitely stands out when you think about it. One of the most frustrating things I remember though is renting it and being completely lost and not knowing what to do next. As time went on, I grew up and I found out that you needed to type in the number 747 into your sub to progress the game. So if you didn't know about Nintendo Power back in the day, then you weren't beating it. But it is fun and has a great story. And that's why it's number 3 on my list. Number 2, The Legend of Zelda. This might be a shocker, but back in the day, one of the hardest things to do was to find certain Nintendo games in stock at the store. It's kind of like how collector's editions are now, where they sell out almost instantly. So when I got my NES in 1989, I'd mostly missed the original Zelda craze. By that time, Zelda 2 was a new and exciting adventure everyone was talking about. So I didn't want to look like a loser and be playing the old adventure because Zelda 2 was out at the same time. So I didn't check out Zelda until 1990, before A Link to the Past came out. I borrowed a copy from my friend and said it was for a school assignment so I wouldn't look like I hadn't played it before. Needless to say, I'm glad I did. This game was in a league of its own when it came out. Huge overworld with sprawling landscape to explore around in. The game consists of you playing as Link. You must search around and find 8 pieces of the Triforce of Wisdom that Princess Zelda split apart and hid in 8 different dungeons so you can put it back together to gain access to Death Mountain and beat Ganon to restore peace to Hyrule. What could be said about this game that hasn't already been said? It's one of the single greatest video games ever made. Playing it now still takes me back to playing it in my rundown parents trailer at night with nothing but the reflection of the game bouncing off my eyeballs as I sat there endlessly exploring and burning every bush I came across. And moments like that is why it's number two on my list. Before we get to number one, let's look at some honorable mentions that just missed the cut of making it into my top 20. Number 1, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Well, here it is, my all-time favorite game for the NES. i played a lot of games over the years, but one I never got tired of and I play the most is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. You play as Little Mac, who looks like a 12-year-old who is fighting his way up through the ranks of the World Video Boxing Association, or the WVBA. You fight 14 boxers in total. Your punches are only limited to left and right jabs, left and right body blows, and a powerful uppercut. Their uppercut can only be used once the player earns a star, which is typically accomplished by counterpunching the opponent directly before or after certain attacks. After you win so many fights, you have a training montage, kind of like the one in Rocky, which ends up being the password screen. So don't hit that start button too fast before you can write down that password, because you're going to need it. After fighting and winning the belt in three different circuits, it's time for a dream fight against the man, the myth, the legend, Iron Mike Tyson. And my lanta is he tough. He's one of the hardest video game bosses in history. Some would say games like Dark Souls have tougher bosses, but at least you can save right before it. In the Tyson bout, he can end you in about 10 seconds flat, and the closest password point to him is Super Macho Man. So you gotta learn someone old again and beat him just to reach Tyson to try and learn his attacks. So you can really never learn his patterns. If you happen to beat him, you get a special congratulations from Tyson himself. This game has been my favorite NES game for years. 
I know it's not at the top of everybody's list, but the impact that this game had on the culture is amazing. It sold a ton of copies and made boxing even bigger than it already was in the 80s. And to this day, it's still easily remembered by people who were around playing NES in the late 80s. And that's why it's my favorite NES game of all time. Well, that's my list. If you have any memories of any game on the list, write it down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, keep it retro.